3D Alice from Alice in Wonderland Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to be making a four-dimensional Alice in Wonderland theme design with Alice. So when you first look at it, it's got a little 3D Alice on it and she's just kind of looking up and then if you take off that because it's magnetic, so you can take off Alice and then she shrunk down and so she's significantly smaller underneath. So it's like when she gets big and then she shrinks back down. So that is what this is. I hope you like it and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So to begin with, I'm going to attach the magnets. So the first one is going to go right about in the middle, well, a little lower than the middle of the nail. And then the next one I'm just going to put above that. These are both in an area that I know my 3D Alice is going to be. So I'm just going to glue those on. And as you can see, it does take a little bit of finesse because they kind of want to just stick together. So to keep them separated and not glue yourself to the nail is a trick. So just wanted to mention that. And then I'm going to cover those up and encapsulate the, or not, but do an overlay over the nail with a really pretty eggplanty dark purple. This is pr probably, I'd say, my favorite color if I had to choose one. This really dark purple is just a color I love. And so after that's on there, I'm going to take and I'm going to add a clear layer over the top of it just to add some strength. You can see the magnets through it, but I know that I'm going to be doing quite a bit of painting on top of this color, so I'm not too worried that the magnets are showing at the moment because I know that soon enough you won't be able to see them. And so now I'm going to be filing the nail with a 180 grit file just to smooth it out. You cannot file all the way past where you want the magnets to be. The nail has to be at least as thick as the magnets. But if you do file down to them, the acrylic is just going to sort of pop off and you're going to be left with just the raw magnet showing, which doesn't really hurt anything. But that does happen for me usually. And now I'm going to be patting it or buffing it with a 240 grit padded buffer just to remove any scratches that that first file may have possibly left behind. So now with just black acrylic paint, I'm going to be painting my little design. So I started by painting a grid, so I'm making just diagonal lines across the nail, making sure that those little magnets are hidden between some of those lines. Just because then once I start filling in some of those grids, they can get hidden if it's sort of between them, then it's not going to work as well. So I'm just painting that grid going all the way across just like that. And then I'm going to start and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So same thing, make sure that the magnets are within a square. They're, they're not actually squares, they're little diamond shapes. Make sure that the magnet is contained in those. So then just go across, go in the other direction. I know I'm doing black paint on top of purple and it's hard to see. Um, you can actually see it better in the video than I could in real life, which is, surprising to me. Usually you can't see hardly anything in the video that's dark colors against dark colors because it just turns into a big black blob. But you can actually see this, which is nice. So then as I mentioned, I'm going to start filling them in and I'm first going to fill in those two that have the magnets in them to make sure that those do get covered. And so then I just went through and kind of randomly selected them to fill in. And so it didn't work out the way I had planned with the grid, so then I just started going through random ones and filling them in. I was going to make it like a checker pattern, but it, my pattern just started out wrong, so I filled them in differently. But you could definitely do it as a checker pattern, you just have to start out doing your pattern correctly. So then I'm going to begin, and I'm going to be painting my Alice holding that little potion bottle. And so I'm painting the potion bottle first. And so I'm using sort of a really light aqua color, and then I'm going to be shading it in or darkening areas with a blue, and just blending those together just like that. And to make sure that your paint goes on smoothly on the nail, really make sure that you buff it when you are buffing it with the 240 grit, just to get rid of any scratches that are left behind, because anything that's left on there is really going to make your paint hard to apply and not smooth, and it's just gonna cause you trouble. So then after that little potion bottle is made, I'm going to start working on Alice. And I also added a tiny little tag with some lavender color, and I'm just going to start painting her. And so I added her hair, and I know that it looks really rough at this point, but you can go back through and touch things up with black, and it sort of fixes that all out. So then add her arms and her dress. And this is sort of when she's partially transitioned in her shrinking process. She shrinks quite a bit more than what I could easily show on a nail, but you do get to see it. And so then I'm going to be adding the white, the apron on her dress, and the little bow at the back, just like that. And then add her legs, and little ruffles at the bottom of her dress where like her petticoat shows, and then a little highlight on the bottle. And I'm just going to touch up her face a little bit and her hair, make sure everything looks right and everything looks a little hinky, make sure that that gets touched up and fixed touch up, thin out her hair a little bit, add her black headband. And as far as the 
little details in here go. I'm not doing those like her eyes and everything. It's so small that it really wouldn't even show up as being anything. So I just didn't worry about any of those details. And as I say that, I'm painting her eye, but it's not as, I mean, it's not like when you're painting it bigger, you're not really doing as much. So then I'm going to be adding a layer of a gel sealer over the top of that, curing it, and then wrapping up the whole thing really tight, as tight as I can get it with plastic wrap. And then over the top of the magnets that were on there before, I'm going to add another two. So there's another magnet on top of the previous ones. So it goes nail plastic wrap magnets. So then on top of the plastic wrap, on top of the magnets, I'm going to start sculpting my 3D Alice. And so it's a little weird doing it on top of the plastic wrap because it's slippery and so your acrylic wants to spread. But if you have, if you take the liquid out of the back of your brush, if you bleed out your beads, then it's going to go on a lot smoother. But it is a different feeling than applying acrylic on top of other acrylic. It just, it feels different, which I know it's hard to explain that. And until you've done it, you don't really, it's hard to tell what exactly it feels like, how it acts. But it takes a little learning curve, but then it's fine. So I first did all of her face with white acrylic, and then I'm going to go and do her hair with yellow. And then I'll go back through in a moment and add some cover pink to her skin to give it that skin tone. But if you don't put white underneath it, the dark colors from underneath are going to show through the cover pink. And this does depend on the cover pink because there's different levels of opacity with them. The one that I have is probably on the lower end of pigmentation. It works it makes beautiful nail beds but for doing something like this where you want to be an opaque color it does not give you that so i always put a layer of white underneath it just so that nothing shows through so now i'm adding that layer of cover pink to her skin and the cover pink i'm using isn't one that's really pink it's a little bit more of like a beige tone and so i'm just going to do that i find that it works really well for doing these cartoon characters and so then i'm going to be adding her neck so so far i've got like the profile of her face and her hair and her neck. So in this one, I'm also going to be doing a little potion bottle that she's just starting to sip. So it's before she's actually shrunk at all, but just right there in the beginning. And then I'm going to be adding her dress. And the colors that I'm using here do not match the colors underneath perfectly. So I did go through and pretty much paint over the entire thing. But the reason it's important to add these, instead of just sculpting the whole thing with white and then painting the whole thing, is because it's really hard to get the paint smooth into like the little crevices of her hair and get everything there really nice. But if you paint it later and you do get 99% of it, those little bits that show, it's not gonna look like you're missing something, like it's not gonna be a weird streak of white. It's gonna be a little bit of yellow that shows through but doesn't necessarily look like it's out of place. And so I'm adding another layer of yellow to her hair and I'm gonna take some up and over her shoulder like it's resting in front of her and then just add a little bit more of a texture to it. So I'm going to thicken up the area that kind of gets pulled back from the front of her face and then add a couple different sections. Just see how I drag my, I pulled my brush up through the acrylic to make that section separated like that. And then add a little bit more to her head, like to the back of her head. And so now to make the potion bottle, I'm using, this color is called a Hint of Mint, I believe, and it is glittery and it is really really pale green and it pretty much looks white you can't hardly even tell that it is green at all which is almost kind of defeats the purpose when I bought it I bought it online and I really thought it was gonna be greener than it is so I was a little disappointed but it's still a really pretty color it just is almost white then I'm going to go through and once that's all done I'm going to be adding her arm so it's just a little bit of arm showing out the bottom of her sleeve and then also her hand that's going up and holding onto that potion bottle. So it's not just floating in midair. For one thing, if it's floating in midair, it's not going to stay once you take it off the plastic wrap because it's not holding onto anything. And then it's also, that would just be a little strange. So make sure that you add her hand. And I know it's hard to tell, but you can see a little bit that the white that I'm using currently to make her hand and her arm are whiter than the potion bottle. But then after you have that, just go over and cover that with a layer of cover pink, just like you did with her face. Make sure that that is nice and covered completely and that there's an even layer of cover pink so it doesn't look splotchy at all with the different thicknesses. And then once that acrylic is set, you can just pop that off the nail and then peel off the plastic wrap. And then that should be pretty good. I'm going to file the edge of it just a little bit to smooth out because it had a couple little icicles or little drips of acrylic. So just file those off. And now, like I said, I'm going to be painting over my Alice. So I started with the same, I used all the same colors that I used on my Alice underneath, like I said, so that they match perfectly. And so I'm just going to start with her face, paint her face and then her arm. 
and then add a little bit more of that teal color like I used underneath to the potion bottle and then just continue painting her. And I do want to apologize quickly and say that partway through this painting process, my camera decided that it was just done. It was taking a break and I don't, I don't know why. Sometimes I think it has a mind of its own, I'm pretty sure. So I missed the detailing of her face. So I missed the part like where I painted most of her eye and where I added her lips and a couple of little outlines and things like that. So you do want to make sure you add her eyebrows, her eyes, her mouth, and a headband. And then a couple little outlines in her hair. That's the stuff I missed and also like outlining her fingers, which I again, I apologize, but I do show what it looks like at the end. And so hopefully that will work for you. So I just started with the white of her eye and then did some outlining and I did refine a little bit here and there, but as you can see, that's the final process after it had all been painted. And so then I'm just going to be applying a layer of matte top coat over the top of that. And then after that is dry, you are all set. So I hope you like this and don't forget to check out the Cheshire Cat video that I uploaded yesterday. That's the natural nail design as well as the uh, four dimensional. It's actually it's like an extreme 3D teapot and then the 4D Cheshire Cat. I would love for you to see them. I hope you like them and please share your creations with me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!